What's up, divas? And what's up, divas? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday, and I'm back to talk you guys' ears off. I feel like I look trashy. You ever have that moment where you just look at yourself and you really don't want to do anything with yourself? You know you're clean, you're taking a bath, a shower, whatever, but you're just in that mood where you're just like, just not feeling it today. And I don't really know how many times I done changed my head wrap this morning. Um, actually three times. Like the other first two made me feel kind of dirty. It, it just took away from the whole entire look. It just made it look worse. And like, I don't know. And maybe the fact that the shirt that I have on is probably like about 10 or 11 years now <clears throat> old. And I love it so much that when I put it on, I just look like a hobo. And my kids start to say that too. They're always like, get rid of the shirt, get rid of the shirt. Tell my kids and I tell everybody all the time, this fucking shirt goes with everything. The shorts that I'm about to show you may not be your typical everyday trend in style, but they are by Gloria Vanderbilt. I don't even think that brand is around anymore, but it was popping when I was a kid. So it's about to be popping right now. Only two bucks, these shorts. No, they weren't at a store significantly low clearance. It was actually at a, a thrift store. Shirt matches. These are like one of my favorite shorts. And I'm going to tell you something. They are fitting looser and looser by the day. Okay? Yes. And I'm super overly dumb, mad, happy about that. I don't know. I didn't use all the cool words I could use, but you guys get the drift of it, right? And today is Real Talk Wednesday. You know, it's really Tuesday, but of course, by the time you guys get this, it will be Wednesday. And I have to take a few moments out of my Real Talk just to say thank you to everyone. Everyone who has watched all of my videos or watched one video or watched zero videos or just didn't watch but left a comment because they love me so much, I have to tell you guys thank you. I also have to tell you guys thank you for all the love and support that you have shown me as well as my channel and my pictures and my wigs and whatever over the years. I want to thank everyone who has donated to my GoFundMe because the girl teeth is going to get fixed sooner or later. And and I'm so happy that you guys are helping me because, you know, it's hard. It's super hard. And I'm not going to go into that long spiel again. But I just want to thank everyone who has donated, donated for me to get my teeth fixed. And everyone who has spread and shared the word and even just like comments. It all means a lot to me. And you guys really don't know how much you're helping me. And I know a lot of people want me to do the journey. And I so want to bring the camera in with me. So I do have a dental appointment next Tuesday to get my other tooth removed which sucks, but it is what it is. But I can get my partials, uh, my partial dentures um, within a few weeks. So thanks to you guys with that. So I'm so thankful. But it's a lot to get used to when you have like so many teeth removed. And so now I'm constantly thinking like there's something stuck on the side of my mouth when it's really not. It's just like that little tooth right here. You see it? Um, and I just feel like this one tooth is right here just feels like there's something stuck on the side of my mouth because there's a space and then there's a tooth and then there's a space and then there's about to be another space because that they're going to take the other piece of tooth out like my god what the fuck am i going to be numbing it up at the age of 42 mm -hmm. I just want to thank everyone for helping me because this means everything to me. It will help me feel a lot more secure about myself because I just really don't. So when I do meet people out in public, like unexpected YouTube family people, I kind of more or less, I don't shy away, but I kind of put my head down and I'm always covering my mouth because I'm just like really embarrassed. And I know there's probably like so many other things in the world that you can be embarrassed about, but we each have our own insecurities and I'm very insecure about a lot of things, whether you guys feel that I'm not or you a lot of you, you a lot of you email me and just like I love your self-confidence but you know what I don't really have that much self-confidence or maybe I shouldn't say it like that but you know I have a lot of insecurities too so even though this is what you see on this side trust and believe me I'm like a very insecure person my weight my teeth um my hair I complain about this all the time in a makeup video. That's probably why I don't do a lot of makeup videos because I hate to do my eyeliner in front of people. But I'm, I just like hate my eyelids, okay, because they're hooded. So I have like this a lot of a lot of extra skin on my eyelids, which drives me crazy because sometimes it just makes my eyes look like they're they're swollen because 
they're hooded. So sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to do eyeliner. But those are just little tiny imperfections that probably wouldn't bother other people. They bother me. I have a, um, also my scar right here, which I have been working on um, and going back and forth to the doctor. That was an embarrassment. So I have like a lot of embarrassments um, or just a lot of insecurities that I have. So the main one is my teeth. That's like the main one because everybody's always talking about not my teeth, but just in general teeth. So it's the teeth on the missing, the teeth in the front. It's just my mouth in general. So yeah, but I thank you guys so much for helping me with this because if it wasn't for any of you guys, then I just wouldn't be on this journey and it would take me so, so, so much longer. So I'm just grateful and I'm very appreciative to everyone. So thank you so much. On to the next. I can't. Oh, yes. So my best friend's brother, he is like the jack of all trades. Um, I guess that's what you would want to call it. He's a really cool guy. He's very fit. He works out a lot. Um, and he's just very um, down to earth. Lauren is more or less one of those people that are like, you would probably see him as wearing an orange monk suit because he's just so spiritual or just so open-minded and free. He's all about eating healthy and taking care of yourself, if that's the right word. He would probably be best known as an organic. I would describe him as an organic, okay? That's it. I don't even know what the heck and why. I, just, just trust me when I say that. He gave me these here called Blackout Bands. And I know I'm probably not the best salesperson in the world with this, but I wanted to share this with you guys. So, blackout bands. Got the ninja ones, sleep and style ones. I know you guys are like, okay, girl, what are blackout bands? You ever been on the beach? And so you got your sunglasses on, but you really can't sleep because the sun is still going through those sunglasses. Uh, that's what these are for. These are amazing. Um, and I've actually got four pairs of them. Mm. It's sleeping in places where your ass can't sleep in general. So say you're on a plane and you don't want, you want to take a nap on a plane. Just don't want no one to know you're really sleeping. And you don't want to wear one of those sleep masks because you still don't want anyone to know you're sleeping. So you wear some sunglasses like this. Your ass can't see nothing through them. No light is coming through. You ain't seeing nothing through them. Don't think you're walking out in public with these because you will be um, more or less tripping and falling and walking into stuff. There's no way you're seeing through any of this. It's totally black. I don't see anything right now. Um, the only thing I don't like is the shape of them. Like, you know me, I like my sunglasses to be all the way up here. With these, you don't see a thing through them. As These as well. You can't see anything through these as well. These are a little bit more fashionable. And I think from the way they feel, they feel a little bit more raised up. I don't know. Maybe not. But my eyelashes are like really pushing away from them. But they're cool because you can just lay out in public. Well... I'm not saying lay out in public or be on a plane ride or a bus ride or whatever and you can get yourself some sleep and people would really not know because they cannot see your eyes through these and you're not getting any light. So if someone's trying to rob your ass on a flight or do something, they wouldn't because they wouldn't know if you were sleep or not. Sleep in style is what they promote. Come in different styles, but these have been used by a lot of the athletes. Um, he was showing me his promotion and things like that. And you also get some blackout foam ear cushions to make sure that your ass don't hear nothing. I gotta figure out a way to do a giveaway for these. So I have four pairs, um, two in the box and two out the box, four pairs. So. If you guys want to try um, some blackout bands, just hashtag below blackout band and I'll pick four people to win a pair and send them to you guys. I don't sleep on the beach because I ain't trying to burn up. thought it would be cool to give those who travel and like to go out on the beach, you know, waste not, want not. I'd rather give them away than let them, you know, just sit around. But they're pretty stylish. This is the mirrored look. And this is just a plain one. And I have two of each. And the ones without the boxes also do come with these little baggies right here. So, yeah. So, you guys know the drill. If you have a video, um, you have a situation that you would like for me to embark on and talk about, then by all means... Give me a shout out email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. You can put in the subject line, real talk. And if you have some people in that email that you want to change the names to, you can always say names are changed. You know what I'm saying? 
So my makeup look for today is very simple. It's this right here and some of the chap ice, which I think is very um, moisturizing. And I also have a new obsession, which is this right here. This is Dunkin' Donuts. And I was so happy to receive a coupon in the flyer for two months of free iced coffee, which is only on a Monday. So every Monday for two months, Dunkin' Donuts has free iced coffees in the medium size, either free medium hot cup or iced cup. I prefer the iced cup because I'm not a coffee drinker, but I have become very addicted to these. And I will tell you guys one thing, TMI, they're very great laxatives for your stomach, which has helped me lose weight. So, you know, I'm just saying. So, yeah, let's get on to this real talk. Um, I love you guys, and thanks for everything. Hey, April, how are you today, diva? My name is... We're going to call her Jamie. And I'm 29, and I from and I am from STL. Look, sis, I really need your advice on this on this one. The guy that I am currently dating is my childhood sweetheart. We recently reunited, reunited, and have been currently serious, seriously dating and living together for about a year now. Things are going great, but not perfect. Here's the thing: his absolute best friend, in my opinion, is a pan sexual a pansexual even though he has never admitted to it he often makes jokes about us having a orgy or a swinging party with him my boyfriend his best friend's girlfriend and i get it even though my boyfriend turns his offers down his friend still makes jokes about it and often asks how about we have sex and i think my boyfriend stupidly tells him about that Last night, my boyfriend says to me in a joking way that his best friend wants to know when are we going to swing with them. I said, hell motherfucking nah. The next morning, he tells me that his best friend is moving today and he needs me to drop him off over there before work so we can help them move. I agreed to drop him off, but I felt within my spirit that this was just a well thought out plan to get my boyfriend over there so they can have this orgy. His friend keeps edging on the do on due the fact that his moving situation just came out of nowhere. Now, I know that people move, and that's his friend, so of course he wants to help, but my boyfriend was just telling me the night before how his best friend and his girlfriend stay together at his mother's house and damn near spend all their money on cocaine. So when he said they were moving so quickly, I was like, how? How, Sway, in my Kanye West voice. So me being the girlfriend that I am, told him that I would drop him off so he can help his friend move in, fear that if I said no, that I would come off like a clingy girlfriend. That's trying to keep him away from his friend. Not to mention his friend often gets a little jealous at the fact that me and my boyfriend spend so much time together. While in the car this morning, he didn't say anything to me the whole way there. He was just doing a lot of texting. I'm on his phone. When we got to his friend's house, right before he gets out of the car, he informs me that he will, spend it, he will be spending the night over there, and he will be back home sometime Thursday or Friday. Now, maybe I'm tripping, but it seems like these motherfuckers think I'm fucking stupid. I really feel like they think they just about play me for the okie doke. My boyfriend doesn't seem like the type of man to have sex with another man. However, I don't push shit past nobody. Just to give you a little more insight, I'm going to tell you two things. Number one, a few years ago, I had a threesome with my best friend and her boyfriend only because she begged me to do so her dude had currently got out of jail and was fine as fuck with a bbc and even though i first declined the offer i later accepted when i tell you that situation destroyed our friendship and ultimately led to me being in a two-year physical mental financially abusive relationship with her used to be dude shaking my damn head i felt like all that bad energy and issues she had with him before the threesome i took on after the threesome and let me tell you it took a long time for me to finally get that demon off of me and heal learn from the situation as well. It was not a good decision at all. The second thing I'm going to tell you is that my boyfriend's best friend recently told my boyfriend that he wanted to watch him have sex with his own girlfriend, which is why I think he is a pansexual because it sounds like he wants to eventually start sucking my boyfriend's dick. 
Now, I can't control what anyone else does and that I should trust that my boyfriend is only going over there to help him move into his new place. However, something in my spirit is telling me that he just planned a whole fucking threesome in my fucking face. But what do you think, April? How should I handle this situation? Should I chill out and stop tripping? Find a way to talk to my boyfriend about it like a good girlfriend whenever he comes back home. Pull up on them after work today or go with the intuition and tell him to get his shit out of my house and end the relationship. If he is going over there to have a threesome with these two sick set... <laughs> If he is going over there to have a threesome with these two sex addicted coke heads, coke heads, then I certainly don't want him coming back home passing that energy off on me. Even though I did my thing in the past while I was completely single, I quickly learned that it was one of the worst decisions that I made in my life. I have nothing against homosexuals or whatever the case may be, but motherfuckers don't keep shit real about what they want nowadays, and I don't want to end up looking stupid later on with all these signs that are telling me that some shit is going down help me out sis p.s thanks in advance i love your videos and your real advice keep it up hashtag long time subscriber okay so i think i call her janie so janie seemed like she about to have some threesome that she don't even know about okay on some real shit you know something let me tell you something some things are just kept better not known okay if your boyfriend's friend is joking with you guys it may be for real and then it may not be for real like you said you'll know what motherfuckers want these days you'll know what motherfuckers be into people don't keep it real and even if he's joking that shit can get kind of like uninviting to some people like some people don't like shit like that and you are one of those people and just probably from past experience you ain't trying to be going there hearing about his sexual episodes or wanting to have sex with you and your boyfriend like some shit is so uncomfortable i mean you know what if my my best friend was to say that to me and i don't know i be i don't really know how i would react i have had those advancements on me not for my best friend but in general you know i've had i've had certain situations where i was not aware and i walked into him and i was like oh whoa and i will share that with you guys in a minute but here's my thing if you don't feel comfortable in any type of situation, don't just sit there and make yourself um, be forced to just deal with the situation. Yeah, that's your boyfriend. Y'all been together for a year. A year ain't a long time. However, it wouldn't matter if it was 15 years. If he has a friend that's making you feel uncomfortable with the shit that he's saying, then you need to address that. And also, as a man, as your boyfriend, he should be addressing that too because I don't think that that is... Um, what's the right word for it either way i don't think that your boyfriend's best friend who's a man should be coming at you like that other men don't take the shit like that like if that was my man like my boyfriend or my husband and he was to see that his best friend was you know joking around saying oh we should swing he wouldn't take to that shit he would not like that shit at all and me personally if that were me and my best friend was saying that to my boyfriend or my husband or whatever and she just kept saying it and i wasn't up with that shit and i wasn't down with that shit i would definitely put her in a place because you ain't about to come around disrespecting talking about oh we should have a swinger party well nigga i ain't with that shit you better watch what the fuck you say but if you down with it then cool to each his own everybody's entitled to their own preferences and what they want to do in life you should never be able to judge anybody by what they like however you ain't about to put me in no uncomfortable situation now on to the uncomfortable situation now you guys know when i first moved here maybe you guys don't know maybe some of you don't know when i first moved here which was almost four years ago in july it'd be four years i lived right across the street from a porn star p-o-r-n not a pawn porn you know sex movies and shit she lived across the street from me i really didn't care for her too much and it had nothing to do with her profession it wasn't even that because i don't care you know what i'm saying it was her bougie ass fucking attitude where she thought she was better than everybody else and the way she would try to come down and look upon me and i'm the type of person bitch you ain't about to do that to me not today not no not not april not to me not mm -mm, mm -mm. not pamela posey's daughter no no mm -mm not not happening you know so basically i had to let her know what type of person i was and we're gonna dead the situation and now you're gonna chill the fuck out and watch how you talk to me as a neighbor as a friend whatever we became like very close one of the bestest friends she took me everywhere with her we went to la i started making wigs for her i would do her makeup i was basically her assistant you know what i'm saying so 
I would go with her. She would always, it would always be a plus one. So I was able to travel with her. I went to porn star award shows, you know, like they have the music and Emmy, um, the movies, the music of the Oscars or the music awards. They have ones for porn shows too, porn stars. So I went to a couple of those and I was able to meet all type of like porn stars, you know, that you would see or you would hear about. I was able to meet those. I was able to walk on the red carpet. I was able to go to like all kind of like parties and shit. And it was a little bit out of the norm, but you know what? I got used to that. Not even out of the norm, but when I say out of the norm, it wasn't like orgies or anything like that. It was just award shows. I never knew that they had things like that for porn stars. You just award show for sucking dick like really you know what I mean but it is what it is but it was a cool environment everybody was cool these people even though they take their clothes off and they fuck for a living they're really nice people so it was always nice to be able to venture out and to to meet different people and to go to these different type of shows so I'll never forget one time we went to this hookah lounge in Texas and she had to make an appearance there. So I flew out with her and we had a hotel room. We was there for three days and you know, it was different for me because this was kind of like my first time really in Texas like that. You can't really count a drive through when you try to move to Arizona. Driving through Texas really don't count. So this time I was able to, you know, chill. So we at the hookah lounge and we dancing and we drinking and shit. We having just a really great time and shit like that. And you know, we are like the best of friends. So we dance with one another and then there's this other girl that just you know she came in to meet my bestie or my best friend or my friend or whatever she came in to meet her because she was a porn star and she came with her boyfriend or husband I don't know what he was at the time I thought it was her husband because just the way they were but I mean I guess you don't have to be married to a person anyway we just all hit it off really well we was dancing and having a good time and at first I really did think that they were together until she started coming on to me you know and I really didn't think she was coming on to me I just thought she was friendly and so in return I never like to feel uncomfortable and I would never want anybody else to feel uncomfortable so you know I was nice to her in return because that's just the type of person I am there's no need to be rude to somebody even if they go that way or even if they like you in the way that you don't like them, it's still no need to be rude. You know what I'm saying? You just let them know this is not my style or whatever the case may be. Well, you know what? Sometimes you don't even have to do that because you don't want to make the person feel uncomfortable. Me personally, I don't like to make anybody feel uncomfortable unless you make my ass feel uncomfortable. So I just, you know, I kept continuing to talk with her and have a conversation with her. And then I just thought, okay, maybe she's just really friendly and she likes my vibe and my conversation because I was cool, crazy, cool, you know, and shit like that. This is what I'm thinking. And she invited me and my friend Priya to an after party after the hookah lounge to this club. She was like, why don't you guys come to this club? I was like, all for it? Like, yeah, okay, cool, whatever. So, you know, Priya, she's like, let's go. We get in our ride and we get there. We got, we drive kind of far out, not too far, maybe like 15, 20 minutes. <clears throat> so it's not too far. And we get to this, like, I don't know if you want to call it a warehouse or whatever, but anyway, so we go inside and it's very quiet, but not really quiet. When I say quiet, like it's not like a crowd of people in there. So it's very kind of like laid back. It kind of looks like a lounge or whatever. And the girl at the front desk is really nice, you know, and you hear music and then there's a guy there. They're all just really friendly. And she's like, oh, we're expecting you talking to me. She said, she said, I forget the girl's name. She said he was going to come through. Cool. I didn't have to pay. That's what's up. Okay. I like getting in free. So she was like, well, let me show you around. So we walk in, the girl comes out and she has on like this dress. To me, it looked like a lingerie type thing, but you know, it's a club. So I might be wrong. Don't speculate so quick. So she just, she said she's going to show us around. So I'm like, okay, Priya's walking with us and she's not saying anything to me. I'm not saying anything because I'm like, okay, she's going to show us around. She's going to eventually bring me to the table. Now, when you first come in, you don't see anything. It's kind of really dark, but except for the opening areas, it's like more lit, well lit. So she comes out from behind the counter and so the guy stays just to handle the front. So we walk and I didn't notice anything, you know, because it was still dark. And so she was like, well, this is one of our rooms. And I'm like, okay, probably a lounge room. And when she opens the room up, there's nobody in there. It's just empty. There's a bed in there and like a theme. It was like a cowboy theme. Okay. I still didn't really pay in no mind. Whatever. We turn around and walk around the corner and I look up. I look up. Because there's a big plasma screen. Not a big plasma screen, but it's probably like 40 inches, 42 inches. I look up. Can you please tell me why I seen dick and pussy on the screen of the TV? 
I'm like, what the fuck? All right. Now, trust me. I'm with a porno, porno star. No big deal. I have a porn collection. No big deal. I like to watch dirty movies too. You know what I'm saying? But I just need to know why the fuck am I seeing this shit right here out in the open of a public club lounge. So I don't say anything yet because, you know, April just chill the fuck out. But I'm just like, did she take us in this other room? She was like, this is our other room. And it was more or less a room that was open. So it didn't have any doors, but it was kind of dark. Uh, was there some fucking going on? I was like, what the fuck? And I didn't say anything at first because I didn't want to seem like the outcast, the awkward one, the one that feels like a dodo head. So um, I let her show us around completing the tour. And I'm just looking at Priya like, and so she finally says, well, I'm going to bring you to your table. Do you guys want to use the bathroom or clean up? I was like, yeah, I need to use the ladies' room. So I bring Priya in. I said, where the fuck do you got me at? She's like, you didn't know where we were coming? I'm like, no. Where the fuck are we at? She was like, you didn't understand what the girl was saying to you? No. She said she was inviting you out to a swingers club. I was like, what? She's like, you didn't know that's what she was saying? I was like, a bitch, no, I didn't know what the fuck she was saying. Um, do I look like a sex person to you? Like a porn star? Do I look like a hooker? I didn't know what the fuck she was saying. I don't know that lingo. I felt so awkward. I said, y'all, you knew we was coming here? She's like, yeah, I thought you knew. I was like, no, I did not know. I did not know. I was so embarrassed. But you know what? I wanted to play cool because I'm... Just the cool one. I'm supposed to be the one that's more tougher than Priya because she's small and petite. So I'm more or less always with her because I'm the more aggressive one. She just can't say no to people. I'm so more aggressive. So I basically always got her back. So I can't be the one that just like punks out right now because then I'll just look like, what the fuck? So I was like, okay, well, whatever. We come out the bathroom and she shows us to the lounge part where there's couches and there goes the girl who invited me there. Now she's fully dressed, thank God. But does she come over with her boyfriend? And she's like, I'm so glad you came. And she gave me a hug, like a friendly hug, like, hey girl. Did this bitch try to start sucking on my goddamn titties? I was like, hold up. First of all, I didn't even know we was coming here. Second of all, um, what is you probably doing? I thought you knew that I wanted you. No, bitch, I did not know that you fucking wanted me, and I would really not um, want to do this, please, okay? And I really don't want to be feeling awkward. It was the worst experience of my life at a swingers club that I didn't even know that's where the fuck I was going. So we left, and I was like, I want to go now. When we got back to the hotel, I had to jump in the shower and scrub myself down. Um, I just felt so dirty, like totally dirty, and... Not only that, did I scrub myself down, but I had to get so freaking wasted and high because I just could not believe what the fuck I had walked into. Like, I don't judge anybody, but could you at least prepare me for the shit? Like, prepare a bitch. Don't have me walking into some shit where I don't know what the fuck I'm walking into. I mean, maybe she knew or maybe she, like she said, she thought I knew what the girl was suggesting. I don't know that lingo. So just don't assume sometimes what people want. But I had, I felt so awkward and I just felt so weird. Like, it was so unexpected, and I've never in my life seen that shit in person. Like, watching it on TV is totally different than seeing it in person. You just be like, oh, shit, especially if you ain't prepared for the shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I walked around that corner, I wasn't prepared to see the dick and pussy fucking. And then when I walked around the next corner, I damn sure was not about to be prepared to see motherfuckers fucking. Not just two people, but, like... You know, like, there was like four people. I wasn't prepared for that. So when you ain't prepared for some shit, you are just totally taken off guard. So I was totally taken off my rocker. You know what I'm saying? For real. <laughs> so me personally, had I known that that's what I was walking into, I would have let the person know, listen, I don't get down like that. That's not my, that's not my thing. And if it is my thing... Bitch, let me know ahead of time. However, don't put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. If that's what the fuck 
your boyfriend's friend. I think he is really probably like, honestly, your boyfriend's best friend probably do want to fuck you. Okay. He probably don't want to fuck his best friend, but he probably want to fuck you. And that might be what them two is into. You know how some dudes get together and they'll fuck in the same room. You know, I don't know. Men are just kind of just sometimes less emotional creatures as us women. But me personally, I wouldn't be sitting there allowing nobody to make me feel uncomfortable regardless of what the fuck it is. You know what I'm saying? If it's a smoking weed and I don't want to do it or using drugs, and I don't want to do it. I'm not about to let your habits be forced upon me and make me feel like I'm out of my zone. That's one thing that I don't tolerate. To each his own, whatever that person's into, that's your business. And I'm not about to judge you, but you are not about to force yourself upon me. And you ain't about to force what the fuck you like to do on me. That shit, I'm just not going to deal with. You know what I'm saying? So I totally get it. And me personally, if I were you, I would say something. If your boyfriend ain't going to do anything about it, because it seems like he just laughs it off and just goes along with it and just probably figures, laughs it off. Like, oh, that's just my friend. He don't mean no harm. However, it may not bother him, but it bothers you. And why sit there and just take that shit? Why sit there and just allow that shit? If it bothers you, then I would, if I were you, I would address that shit. And if your boyfriend don't like the fact that you're addressing that shit, then I would let him know, oh, well, maybe if you would have said something the fuck about it, then I wouldn't have to. However, you didn't say a motherfucking thing about it. So now I'm about to, and I don't like the shit. And if you want to be over there having sex games and hunger games and all kind of fucking parties and, and shit and dick fucking and all of that, then you go right the fuck ahead if that's what you into but i'm not into that shit and you need to let me know right the fuck now and if you ain't into that shit you need to have a talk with your goddamn friend because it's disrespectful it's totally disrespectful if he keeps suggesting that you guys should swing it's disrespectful to you it's disrespectful to your relationship your boyfriend is disrespecting you if he's joking about it you know what i'm saying because it makes you feel uncomfortable and i don't think that it should be a joke you know what i'm saying if that's what your boyfriend is into then he needs to come clean and say listen i like to have orgies there's nothing wrong with it it's which people do do to each is own. If you want to have a threesome, then go ahead and have a motherfucking threesome. Everybody has experimented with something in their lives, okay? Everybody has. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you my whole fucking lifestyle, okay, or what the fuck I do, because just some things are better kept secret, or not even secret, but TMI, motherfucker, T M motherfucking I, okay? Yes, I have had sex with a girl before, twice, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I've had had whatever. Um whatever. Okay. So now you guys know that, but I have never been in, put in a situation where it's like, OMG, that was the situation that I was put into. And it felt so uncomfortable. I have never been so uncomfortable in my life with something. And that was a very uncomfortable situation. So would I want to be put in another uncomfortable situation? Hell to the fucking no. I'm not about to let anybody make me feel uncomfortable. And I have been put in uncomfortable situations. I I don't know if that was the most uncomfortable situation that I've ever been in. It might have been because, um, you know, even though I might have had uh, my own freaky sides in life, I don't like to be pushed into something where I'm not aware. If you would have told me in layman's motherfucking terms what you wanted me for, then you could have gave me the option of deciding or not. But don't just assume that somebody knows these awkward words. Like, bitch, I'm not in the porn industry. I don't know what the fuck she's saying to me. I thought she was just trying to be really friendly, okay? People do like me like that to where they don't want to have sex with me. They just want to be hanging out with me. I think I am pretty cool like that. But I guess sometimes I'm too cool to that the fact that I'm so cool. You want to have sex with me, you and your boyfriend, or you and your husband. So, yeah, they wanted to have sex with me at their swingers club. I was very, like... I was um, insulted, but yet I was flattered at the same time. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. You just met me and you want to have sex with me. That's nice. Am I that cool of a person? But then yet and still it's like, oh, okay, wow, that's a little awkward there. I just met you and you want to have sex with me. You didn't even give me that option. So it goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? Both ways. Thanks. I'm glad you find me attractive, but okay, chill out a little bit now. Can I get some options here first? How do I know you're my type? And I'm sorry, but she wasn't ugly, but she wasn't my type. I mean, she's kind of little. She just wasn't. She reminded me of that girl from that movie on um, Pulp Fiction with the bangs and shit. She wasn't ugly. She had the same hairstyle, but she wasn't my type. And neither was her boyfriend. He kind of reminded me of that guy from um, Maroon 7 or Maroon 5 or whatever, Adam Levine. He kind of reminded me of him. And though he wasn't not ugly, he was attractive. They just weren't my type, okay? And just give me some type of hint when you put me in that situation. But also, don't keep just putting me in a situation where I don't know where the fuck I'm at. And 
I don't know if that's what they wanted or that's what they over there doing, girl. But if I were you, I would surely address that shit. Don't sit around and feel like uncomfortable with anything. Bitch, address that shit. Because listen, you might be put in the same situation like I was. And <sighs> trust me, that's not a fun situation to walk into. Especially if that's not what you're expecting. And that's not what you're into. Trust and believe. So if I were you, I would put my foot down. And he might just be joking. He may not be a pansexual. And that just may be his way of opening up and warming up to you. Some people are just like that. But if it makes you feel uncomfortable, then say something about it. By all means, say something about it. And I guess you learn something new every day because I honestly did not know that they were called pansexuals. <sighs> a girl be lost. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to learn these. Listen, okay, listen. Some of the things I just don't know about, which is unfortunate, and maybe it is fortunate. Okay, so don't laugh. But a couple of years ago, I learned what Molly was. I really thought that. It was a, a girl's name. I did not know that it was a drug, but I really did think that it was, you know, a girl's name until one of my kids had to tell me, no, Molly is a drug. So sometimes I'm a little naive or sometimes, I mean, maybe I guess because that's not my lifestyle, then I wouldn't know. But I damn sure I'm about to look up pansexual because I've never heard of that. Pan, P-A-N sexual. Like, I pansexual it must stand for something, okay? But either way, it doesn't matter what you're into. Give the person's a heads up. And if you are into shit like that, don't be trying to force your shit on nobody. But also, girl, don't sit there and allow them to keep joking to you about that shit and making you feel uncomfortable. Never feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? That's a horrible feeling to be feeling uncomfortable. Trust and believe. Trust trust me. Take it from me. I have, like I said, I, I've watched stuff like that on TV. No biggie. You know what I'm saying? But to see it in person, you and especially if you caught off guard, it's like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like walking into a room and catching your, your man fucking somebody. You caught off guard. That's never happened to me, but I'm just saying that is a situation where if you didn't invite me to this shit. You just caught me off guard with this shit. I feel really fucking embarrassed and awkward, and I'm about to kill somebody. That's the feelings that I was getting, okay? But also, I felt embarrassed for the people because I was kind of like awkward about it and didn't expect it so and I don't like to make anybody feel inferior you know what I'm saying so yeah okay so let's get on to the next one hi April I watch your videos and I'm a big fan of yours you can call me Jay I'm 25 years old and feel as though I'm in a midlife crisis I've been with my husband since I was 18 years old we have two kids and a child and I have a child that I had when I was 14 and a new baby on the way. No marriage is perfect, but we both have fought to make it work. As you know, with Trump being president, he's changing everything. My biggest fear is my husband's best friend being deported. Oh, I'm a stay-at-home mom trying to figure out shit and find a job to start my husband's status paperwork as if this wasn't enough for me to stress about. This is the real problem I'm going through. I have two sisters that act as though I'm a random bitch off the streets. My older sister, which you can call D, is a whole bag. All she ever does is sleep around with other females' husbands. Even though she herself is married, a few months ago, the dude she was messing around with, his wife started calling her job. Let me tell you, this man's wife has confronted her already on many occasions but if that wasn't enough for her this man's wife called her job and let the whole damn clinic where she works at know what type of bitch she is i guess d is mad at the fact that i won't get my peoples involved to get her lover's address if that wasn't enough she had the nerve to victimize herself telling my parents that i was spreading rumors about her being pregnant and that the baby not being her husband's as for me i don't even speak to any of my family members due to the fact that she spread so many rumors about my husband and children i have quit associating myself with her and even giving her the silent treatment i have gone as far as changing my number and deleting my social media accounts now on to the next bitch so-called sister l l also likes to sleep with married men she went as far as to sleep with my daughter's little eight-year-old neighbor's friend's dad let me tell you this man is 35 years old and she was 19 at the time so moving on last year april 2016 she started talking to a man online who at the time was married with two kids this man is 24 years old and is from my dad's birth place my dad's place of birth which is Durango, Mexico. When she told me she was talking to him, I straight up told her, why would you talk to someone who was married in a whole different country and has a wife and kids? This bitch says he told me they live together and sleep in the same bed but don't have sex. I told her, you must be a dumbass bitch to believe that. Of course she got mad and didn't speak to me for weeks. 
Speed forward to August 2016, L plans a vacation to Mexico behind my parents' backs. My dad finds out and books his trip with her. They travel to Mexico and this bitch disrespects and embarrasses the family. She comes and goes as she wishes from my aunt's house, not even helping her clean the house or cook. She doesn't even care to tell anyone where she's going or what time she'll be back. My dad finds out, my dad finds out that this bitch was locked up at this man's house from day to night. If that wasn't enough, everyone knows everyone, so everyone knows in town. When when my sister Elle came back from her trip, it slipped out of her mouth to tell me, this motherfucker told her, if you like me, you better fix my papers, because I'm not going to be those guys that wait for these girls to visit once or twice a year. So this man has convinced her and has brainwashed her that she's the best thing that's happened to her, that he's the best thing that's happened to her, and basically painting her a fantasy world. Moving forward to February 2017, this bitch is going through with bringing him. My sister D and I are buddy buddy. My, my so D, my sister D and L are buddy buddy, spreading rumors that I got pregnant out of jealousy towards them, and that I'm jealous and wish my relationship was like theirs. Since since all of this, I have cut both of these hoes out of my life and wish to not have any contact with either of them. And this also includes my mom. My mom stands by my sisters and does not support me anyway. As sad as all this sounds, I'm not supporting, um, I'm as sounds. I only have myself and my one best friend, which is my husband. What kind of mother tells their daughter to leave her husband that works, provides for their kids and has a new baby on the way. My mother has gone as far as telling me that elite on um, what she can do illegal. She must have forgotten where she came from. Hopefully, we can give some good advice. Thanks in advance. Whew, I read that without trying to take a breath. <clears throat> so, Jay is 25. She feels like she's in a midlife crisis. Girl, you're only 25. I should be the one feeling like I'm midlife crisis. That's when you're like in your late 40s or 50s, I do believe, because that's midlife, not 25. Shit, if you're having a midlife crisis at 25, I would like to at that age, too, because I, I wish I was 25 again. You know, that's 17 years ago. We could trade places. Hmm. But anyway, so, unfortunately, because we got this new asshole for president, he is threatening to um, deport people and shit. She is, Jay is basically having a crisis right now because her husband is an illegal. And that sucks because, you know what, I live here in Arizona and there are a lot of Hispanics. There are a lot of Mexicans here. And I'm going to tell you something, you guys. When I first moved here, I was very overwhelmed at the Hispanic population because I wasn't used to that. Even though I've come from New York City, I was not used to just the Spanish population. You know, in New York City, we have every day different type of ethnic background there so it's like you know but when I got here I was very overwhelmed however let me tell you something okay as I was saying before my memory card died or got full with every culture it doesn't matter Hispanic Asian Indian black Caucasian there are people you like there are people you don't like okay but I will say this. I think that Trump is an asshole because don't be threatening to deport Mexicans just because they're here. They are some hardworking people, okay? They are very hardworking. I think there are a lot of people, a lot of cultures that can agree to me um, with me on this, that they are very hardworking. They are very hardworking African-Americans, Caucasians, Asians, whatever. They're, they are very hardworking. And I hate the fact that, okay, yeah, some people, we do need to have laws where you can't just come over here. Unfortunately, that's unfortunate. But if they've been here for so long and they're not doing anything, they're not a threat to anybody. Don't be harassing them or deport them. You know what I'm saying? I just think that's really a low blow for anybody to do to someone. But you know what, Jay? If your mother is threatening to have your husband deported and shit, then what I would do is I would kind of like leave ties and leave them alone because you never know what you may say to them may spark up some type of feelings and ill manners that, that they may have about you and your family. And they may keep continuously trying to threaten you. Now, if your sisters are whole bags, that's just what they are. But sometimes we have to set ourselves apart from our family members. Let's like I be saying to my bestie all the time, family members will do it to you. It don't matter if they family members or not. They will fuck you in the ass without any type of lubrication and then not even give a shit, which is unfortunate because that's family. And that's friends too. You know what I'm saying? Family and friends, it's all the same thing. They will fuck you over in the end. Seems like your family members are jealous with your living situation because I'm sorry, if I had a great man who took care of me and my kids and didn't have to work, etc., etc. 
I would be so happy and blessed. And being that your sisters probably don't have that, even though they're in a marriage, they probably still don't have that type of relationship with their husbands. So they seek attention from other men. I mean, come on, let's be real and honest here. If you had a really great relationship with your husband and you guys were best of friends and he was your everything, why would you need to step out on him? So that may be the issue with your sister, D and L, that their relationship with their mate is not like yours. And that's the reason why they step out. However, if they want to be hoes, thoughts, whores, whatever, then that's their business. But sometimes, even if it's family, we got to kind of like step away from them because they can do more harm than good. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, it just goes like that. They can do more harm than good. So with me, I like to kind of like just kind of separate myself. I have family members that I love to death and I have family members that I could care less about. And I more or less be like, bitch, don't come near me. I don't fuck with you. You a hoe or you dirty. Or bitch, you know how to steal from me. You steal my clothes and shit. I've had those situations as well for family members. So me personally, I kind of like... Um, I don't really have too many family members that I fuck with. Um, you know, I, I, I have my best cousin who I always talk to. And then I had another cousin that we used to be cool, but she would always talk about my one cousin who I will always be with. And then she would smile up in her face and I don't like shit like that. So I had to call her on it. So we haven't spoken to each other in a couple of years and I'm fine with that. You know what I'm saying? I'm fine with that. Maybe if that bitch grew some motherfucking hairline, her hairline all the way back to her fucking nape or her neck, then maybe we could be cool. But until then, we not. And I know that was like a low blow, but I don't give a fuck. Okay? Because she don't like me. She be talking about me too. So anyway, me personally, Jay, you have to just leave people alone. You have to set your side, yourself aside from them. Unfortunately, that is your mother. And unfortunately, she's taken up for your sisters. So that goes right there to show you what type of person even your moms can be. Now, those are your siblings. You don't have to hate them. You don't have to be their best friend. You don't have to love them. But you know what? Just be neutral and be respectable and be ladylike. You don't never have to lower your standards to them. You ain't got to lower yourselves to them. If they loud and obnoxious, bitch, you don't got to be loud and obnoxious neither. You know what I'm saying? Handle your business and worry about taking care of your husband and his needs and what needs to be done. So that way he can... That way he can secure himself right here in the United States. You know what I'm saying? Do that. Um, I wouldn't even worry about them. That's the type of lifestyle that they want to live, then so be it. And as far as you being pregnant because they are, girl, please, you already got yourself a family. So what the fuck are they talking about? Enjoy your happy home and stop worrying about what other people or what other people think. I know I say this to you guys a lot. Like, don't worry about what other people think and worry about what you do. And, you know, I say that a lot. And sometimes... I can say that I don't listen to my own, you know, words of wisdom, like don't worry about what everybody think. Um, but I will be honest and tell you that sometimes we have to set ourselves apart from family. And I have done that on many different occasions just because, listen, if a bitch don't set herself away from motherfuckers, I'm going to lose my cool. And I ain't trying to lose my cool for no motherfucking body. Okay? Never lose your cool or your character for anybody. So with that being said, just keep yourself away from them. Just lose communication with them and just be cordial. It's your mom. Be cordial and respectable, but don't include yourself and don't include them in, you know, your lifestyle and what the fuck you do. And if you guys can agree with me on that, then um, put your opinions down below. So, the last story of the day is going to be, um, here we go. This one right here. Okay. Hi, I already changed the names. I usually don't do this sort of thing, but I really need help. You can call me Alana. So I'm having issues in my work environment. I am of color and I recently have gotten into it. And whoa, I am of color and I've recently gotten into it with a white girl at my job. She had been bullying me for months, talked about my hair, spoke about my clothes, catty, passive aggressive shit with other girls in my pod, talking behind my back, but just mean in that mean girl kind of way that women do, that men don't seem to notice, just putting me down whenever she can. Her and another girl, I never retaliated. I did complain about the harassment multiple times to my supervisor, who was a man, and he did address it in a team meeting. Well, to fast forward, last Sunday, her and I were in a team meeting, and she asked me to get up out of her seat in the most condescending way. White girl talking down on black types of way. She said on the sly, and you can pull my seat as well. 
she said on the slide and you can pull my seat out as well for her to sit in it I kicked to see I kicked to the seat to the back and said I will never pull out a seat for you I would fight your ass before I pulled out a seat for you and she laughed and said I won so I sit down in another seat on the other end of the table Fast forward, it's now the end of the meeting. We were playing a team development game, like the game telephone, and I messed it up for my team. The actual answer was, I need four tickets to the movies, two adults, two kids, for a 3.30 show or something. I said four adults, two kids, which obviously doesn't equal four tickets altogether. I messed it up for everyone, and she says in front of everyone that I messed it up. I have a math book, but if you ever want to borrow it, whoa, hold the fuck up. This bitch said... Um, I messed it up for everyone, and she says this in front of my co-workers. I have a math book if you ever want to borrow it and learn how to do math. So after months and months of her rude comments, I have had it. I flew across the table, stepped to her, and said, I'm sick of your shit. You have always had something to say about me. I'm done. And raised my fist. But I did not hit her. I calmed myself down in time. The senior rep said I had treated, I had threatened her. One misheard me, and even though I said I would put her in the hospital when I yelled, my mom has been in the hospital, and I can't deal with this. This guy tried or is twisting my words into threats. Now, today we all had a meeting. She lied and twisted everything to make herself look like a victim. They are believing her because she is white and frail looking. Next to me, she is victimizing herself. I live in the South. There's still a lot of racial tension here. And no matter what in these situations, white girls against black, they take the white frail girl aside. She is trying everything to get me fired, even though countless of times before this, she was so unprofessional and I have complained. I don't know what to do. I can't lose this job. I pay my mom's medical bills. I was homeless before this. I need this job. It's the best paying job I have ever had. And I just can't lose this job. To make matters worse, my supervisor made it unclear if it would if I would be fired. So I freaked out and went to HR about it, only to have become clear to me as I explained my story that the HR woman would not help. Now the HR department is investigating the situation, and the odds are not in my favor at all. No matter how truthful I am, they believe her lies and the way that she has been twisting the story. So the HR lady tells me that her bullying me is out of code, out of conduct, but me stepping to her is also out of code. And so she will have to take corrective action, which means that I would lose my job. To make matters worse, I am three months in still in my probation period after training, and she's been here for three years and has, te and has, and has tenure in the company, basically. So therefore, if you look at her stats compared to mine, she comes off as more of an asset to the company than me, who's still learning the ropes. I'm scared. I went home and contemplated suicide. I feel like I have suffered in my life as a while enough. I'm shy. I'm one of the most caring people in the world, and I can't reason with these people. I'm devastated, depressed, and this sends unjust. And like this is an absurd circumstance where others in this situation are extending no compassion, understanding, or reason at all. Please, I'm begging you, please help me. P.S. She has texted me the next day after the altercation, asking me to hang out with Winky Face as in her text literally read, do you want to hang out? When I didn't respond for hours not knowing what to say or what she meant, she replied, I guess that's a no, crying and laughter in a laughter face. As a woman, we know this is catty, and I'm about, I am not about this catty shit. I can't understand it. I'm more like, I'll take it up to some point, and then after we can handle it face to face if we need to. Sorry about this long letter, but please help me. Ooh, so basically, Alana has had is having issues at her workplace with one of her coworkers. Now, so you guys already know Alana's black, and her coworker who has been a bitch is a white girl. I'm sorry, but I don't give a fuck what color you are. You is not about to disrespect me and bully me in no shape or form. Okay, I have been bullied as a kid growing up, and I am not about to be bullied as a motherfucking adult. Yes, a bitch has been bullied, okay, for a long time in life, okay, and now is where I put my foot the fuck down. Now, yes, we all need a job. We all need to make money. We know we all need income. However, there's a time and motherfucking place for everything. You're not about to go. I'm not about to go to work every fucking day being bullied and mistreated and made to feel, um, inferior to any fucking body. Here's the thing, Alana, you have went to your manager, supervisor, whatever, and he has 
done nothing. When I say nothing, when you can go to a team meeting and try to resolve a problem, but you're kind of like doing it in an indirect way, is not resolving the situation. Okay, that's not me. That's not being resolved. That's just you bringing it up in an indirect way, trying to throw out fucking blank hints, hints, hints or whatever to people like don't bully. Let me tell you something. A person can take but so fucking much. Okay, I'm sorry, but you have done everything in your power to get this young lady to stop. The only thing that you haven't done is whip her fucking ass. Okay. And after a while, a person can take, but so much me as a person, I can't take so much. You are not about to keep fucking with me and fucking with me and fucking with me. Okay. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to allow you to keep bullying me or keep allowing yourself to feel like you're better than me or that you've got the upper hand and I'm not going to let let you play me either um I'm not going to allow you to do that as well Now, here's the thing. You have went all out of your way, meaning you have done the right things. You have complained about it. You also have text messages where the girl is sending you fucking texts. To me, that's catty, and it's also kind of like a way of a threat, even though it doesn't seem like a threat. First of all, we just had a verbal altercation, bitch. Now you want to text me talking about you want to hang out with a winky face? I hope that you did not delete those text messages because that's a form of harassment. So me, personally, I would have shown the shit to the HR. However, me personally, if I know you're about to fire me because of this bitch, I'm not about to show nobody nothing. What I'm going to do because you keep threatening me and now you fucking with me. You are fucking with me. That's what she's doing. When she's fucking with you. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to whip your motherfucking ass. And I know that's not professional and it may not look good on a job resume. And I know you need this job. However, there is always other jobs out there. And I know finding a job is work. It's work and a job in itself. However, there is a fine line between disrespect and I would not want to go somewhere where I don't feel comfortable daily. So you just started working that job. You've been there for three months. She's been there for three years. And she seems like she is the fucking office bully. It's one thing to go to school, be bullied, but I'm not about to go where I'm trying to make my bread and my money, okay, just to, for a living. I, who wants to get up and go to fucking work every day? Nobody. I don't know nobody that loves to get up and go to work and work for somebody else, okay? That's a chore. But being that I got up, and I'm making myself feel good about coming to work. And this is what I have to do. Bitch, you ain't about to make my motherfucking day miserable at the 9 to 5. That's not about to happen. We not about to go down like that. We not going to let that situation arise. Now, you either going to do what the fuck you need to fucking do and chill the fuck out. You going to respect my motherfucking gangster. Or if I'm going to have to constantly keep telling you to chill the fuck out and respect my gangster, then what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to show you in other ways. Now, you can either ridicule her back or you could pull her to the side and let her know, listen, you're not about to keep continuously trying to sabotage me. That's what you have to use the word, not even using the word as bullying, because if you use the word bullying to a bullier, they're going to feel like they're better than you. They're going to treat you inferior and they're going to keep constantly saying or bullying you. So the word is you're not about to continuously try to sabotage. You're not going to try. Not you ain't going to sabotage her, bitch. You're not going to try because you've been trying and I'm not allowing it. You're not going to continuously try to sabotage me and my career. This is what you're going to do. At the end of this day, your whole attitude is going to change towards me. You have one more time to bully or to try me. And then there's going to be consequences. It's not a threat. You didn't say I was going to beat your ass, but there's going to be consequences. However... You already, Alana, you already went there with her. And you basically almost pulled the bitch across the table. And I get it. You couldn't take it anymore. But here's the thing. If you do get fired, you can always fight this. You can always go to the Department of Labor, Unemployment, and let them know, listen, I've went ahead and I've spoken to HR. I've spoken to my supervisor. Numerous attempts and numerous accounts on this girl, okay? And this is her. This is the messages that she's sending me. This is the text message. This is what she's doing to me. This is what other coworkers are doing to me. Nobody at my place of employment was helping me rectify the situation, and I got tired of it. Sometimes you have to take matters into your own hand. Unfortunately, 
Sometimes those matters can be verbally threatening someone because sometimes they just don't fucking get it. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to put the pause on you, but bitch, if you keep fucking trying to fucking threaten me, because I'm starting to feel kind of like threatened here. And so I'm going to have to protect myself against your punk ass. You keep trying to threaten me. It's going to be an issue. So never feel like inferior to anybody. Don't let nobody of any fucking color, ethnic background, bully or try to sabotage you, okay? A bitch got one time to try to bully me now. And if you try to motherfucking bully me, I trust and believe I will fucking dig you into the ground. I'm going to bully your ass the fuck back. And I'm going to continue and continue only because you started the shit. One time, you got one motherfucking time to disrespect me. And after that, I'm not going to allow you to disrespect me ever the fuck again. And it's unfortunate that you got to put your foot down like that and let people know, not today, bitch. Not today. Not with April. Not with Muffin is My Lovers. Not with Pamela Posey's daughter. Not with John Furman's daughter. You're not about to disrespect me. You're not. That's just not going to go down. And you might have lost your job, Alana. But you know what? Here's the thing. I would rather lose my job than lose my self-respect, okay? Because if they weren't trying to help you and they're siding with her, then there's no place like that for you at that company. I honestly would not want to work there because that just allows me and lets me know that my job performance and the person that I am does not even matter to you guys at all. You would rather side with somebody who is a fucking work bully than side with somebody who is humble and works hard. You know what I'm saying? And with those type of places, you don't need to be at. So maybe they did you a favor. And don't think about killing yourself and taking your own life because, listen, your mother needs you. Obviously, your mother needs you if you pay her medical bills. You know what? Sometimes we got to just pack up our things and call it as a loss. But then we also have to use it as a learning stepping stool. Like, you know what? That ain't the place for me. I wouldn't want it to be there. If that was me personally and I had to constantly keep Bob being bothered with that shit and then I had to threaten her, I don't want to be there. I'm going to let my point be known. I'm going to threaten you or I'm going to say what I got the fuck to say. But I ain't going to want to work there no more because you know why? I'm not valued as a person. And if you're not valuing me and my worth, then bitch, y'all can all kiss my motherfucking ass. Okay? Or some real shit. So on that note, I got to go. It's pretty probably obvious that this video is probably at least an hour long now. And I know I've been talking y'all ears the fuck off, but... Um, I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious. Leave your comments below. Thank you, everyone, for supporting me and helping me get my teeth fixed or getting them fixed. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. Like, some people get excited about other things, but I'm, like, so excited to get, like, a partial denture in my mouth so I can eat. Like, you guys really don't know. Like, I'm so thankful and grateful and appreciate you all so much. I truly, honestly do, and I thank you all, and I love you. And I will see you guys in a soon-to-come video. I'm feeling all this, she already know this. She want a bad man to come my videos. I'm feeling all this, she already know this. She want a bad man to come my videos. If you want murder me, eh, eh, eh.